Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, and this is the fifth video of my series, and there'll be many more, on the little Unimat lathe, and it's tips number 940, and it's all about accessories for this machine, so let's begin. In the very first video, tips number 936, I pretty much unpacked this and I talked about all of the different accessories but not in any depth at all because everything was new to me. Some of the items I was unsure of what their actual purpose was so I'm going to continue in that vein today but with a greater explanation, greater detailed explanation. So if you look at this scene here, this picture, if it was a still picture I have attempted to reproduce the picture out of this book, pretty much what you see right there. So these are the accessories that were included with a brand new Unimat DB200, that is this model. Anything other than this had to be purchased separately, just like buying a car. Some things are accessories and some things are included but not that many things are included so it's just a basic set to get you started to see what you need and then you order at great expense the other items. Thank you again to Bill Kirkland up in Canada who sent this to me gratis and I want to explain what w was included and then we're going to go into the other box here where the other items are, and there's quite a few other items as well, and I will attempt to explain what these are for the best I can. So let's take a look at what we got here that was included besides the box. I'm going to set the little box off to the side, but all of this stuff would have been in the box when it was purchased, and the price would have been under $200. Remember that Craftsman, Sears Craftsman, also sold this under their own badge, Craftsman. So let's run through this real quickly. Two belts were included, although there are already belts on here. I'm glad to have some spares. I think these are brand new. An Allen wrench. Actually, there were several of those. Remember, everything is metric on this. Here are two dead centers that will fit either in the headstock or the tailstock as such. This vertical member here is to convert it from a lathe into a little milling machine or drill press, whatever you want to call it, and that will be shown in later videos, but this is the post itself, and this is the bracket that goes onto the post, and the entire head and motor would fit right on here. Also included is a little lathe dog. Only one bit was included in the original kit, a little drill chuck that can fit again either on the tailstock or the headstock and that is to be threaded in whereas these little centers are just like a friction fit. Here's the tool post that cutter would not have been included. Quite a heavy duty and this little I'm not sure what it's called, but it goes into the T-slot right here, and then you can fasten various things onto it, whether it be the faceplate or a little chuck or whatever fits on that little thread. And that's metric also. Here's a little faceplate or dog plate threaded, and the diameter is a little bit over two and a half inch. And that'll thread right on, like you see here. This is the, well, it's a pinion, really, with a handle on it, meant to go into this hole, like that. And it is the drill press quill handle. Normally that is probably not going to be kept in place there. But if, I'm, if I do not have it mounted, I'm going to stick a cork in there because I do not want chips to get into that interior part of the headstock. And finally, the last item that was included is this little, oh, it's an arbor for grinding wheels. And this would fit, of course, onto the headstock thread 
and the grinding wheel held between the two flanges. Also was included this nice handbook. Just about everything you need to know is in this book. And this was printed in 1963. American Edistol. So that's probably about when this was manufactured. I'm not sure exactly. And it was only one dollar at that time. Remember that this machine was sold in Canada. So instead of being American Edistol, it's Canadian Edistol. Again, modeled DB200. I'm so happy that Bill sent many other accessories here in addition to what would have been supplied as a new machine. So let's go through all of this stuff. Now you've seen that in the previous video, but I didn't know enough about some of these items to even give them a name or I had no idea what they did. But I may not have mentioned yet, but this machine has a three inch swing. So here is a disc that's three inches in diameter and you can see that that would be the maximum size work that you could put in there. Three inch and even this almost touches this back rail. Now if it would be necessary for you to turn something a little bit larger than three inch and I can't imagine what on a small machine like this but anyway this machine can be verted, converted to a machine that has a four and a half inch swing now they won't fit in there now, but the way to do that is to take the headstock off and insert this little riser in there, which is three quarters of an inch thick. And that will raise it up enough to give you the clearance you needed for a four and a half inch diameter workpiece. Now I do not have a riser for the tailstock. I'm not sure they ever made one. However, I know there's one on Thingiverse, but I do not have a 3D printer. If anyone can print me one of those, please do and send it along and uh, that would be interesting. This aluminum casting, very nicely made, it's a die casting, will fit directly onto the quill and notice that I did move the quill down a little so that this can be attached and it would go on like this and then be tightened in whatever location you would want like that and a few minutes ago I talked about the little grind wheel arbor there it is again and three grinding wheels were included so if we were to put this pink wheel on it would go on something like this between the flanges and then the grinding wheel would screw right on to the spindle Boy, that's a pretty tight fit. Matter of fact, that doesn't fit. I think the grinding wheel has to be dressed down a little bit in diameter. It doesn't quite fit into the guard. Well, that's funny. Now, the white wheel will fit in here just fine, but it looks like it might have been used and dressed, but I'm not sure. The pink wheel here which has no blotters on it by the way. Yeah, that's brand new, but it as you can see again that it doesn't quite fit or it's such a tight fit I couldn't get it to go on. I need to deal with that if I ever actually use this. This nice little four jaw chuck which is about two and a half inches in diameter approximately was included when it came from Canada. However, it would not have been a piece of standard equipment. So I'm so glad to have that. I would also like a three jaw chuck which was not included. But it's better to, if you are only allowed one chuck, you're better off with a four jaw chuck than you would be with the three jaw chuck. All right, what else do we have here? There is a little saw blade here, and I believe it's for woodworking, but maybe it works for metal. You can see that's been used. Now it doesn't fit on this arbor, it is to be mounted on this arbor which is also threaded and you'll see why here in just a minute because you would need this on for the little table saw that I'm going to show you right now. This little die cast and a zinc, it's not aluminum, bracket is to be mounted on to the cross slide here and in this hole, let me go ahead and put it on there. All right, I've mounted the arbor and the saw onto the spindle and the little bracket right here. So the little table here for the saw, the table saw, 
Notice that it's got a slot here and here. And then this is the opening for the blade. This is really a nice casting too. It's aluminum. And this peg would go right into here. But at this point I'm not going to be able to do the full setup because the motor is in the position where there's interference. So I would have to loosen this and drop the motor down lower because as you can see here I can't get the table on any farther than that because the back of the table is already striking the motor. But you get the general idea. And there's a little miter gauge here. And this is aluminum. At first I thought it was plastic. So it's not too bad. I mean it's kind of cheap but it's, it's okay. So that would fit in there like that. Now, again this is for hobby work. Small pieces of wood, balsa wood, basswood and things like that. And then in addition to that there is a fence that has a little lug here and the lug goes into this slot here for ripping. So you can cross cut and you can rip. And I don't know if I would ever use this but here is the blade guard and I guess the splitter which would mount right into these two little holes right here. Like that. Now there's probably different size blades that can be purchased. I doubt I will ever use that accessory. Hopefully you watched an earlier video where I made this little table here out of aluminum and these T-bolts here allow it to be fastened right into the T-groove right here, T-slot, like that. And then these two were included as well. And these are just little clamps, toe clamps, milling clamps that will fit right into the T-slots and can hold your work down while you're drilling or milling. Also included is this little ball bearing live center. There's no Morse taper in here. It's a straight shank and again it's just a friction fit into the tail stock. This little chuck was included and I do not think it's a genuine Unimat part but this could fit in the three jaw chuck of the headstock and there's a total of three different collets here for very small work. I don't know how true this will run because I do not think this is a, a real precision item but we'll see in later videos. This would be very nice for tiny little work. Watch work and hobby work and things like that. Three different collets. Here are four little tool bits. Quarter inch square but they are they look unused but they're carbide tipped and I do not think that that is good for a little machine like this. We need a lot of power really to run carbide so I doubt that I would ever use these but they would work fine on my other machines. Look at this beautiful little boring bar. I don't know why it's so long. It would flex like a piece of bamboo. But it's marked Edistal and there's a little tool bit. One end is angular and the other would be straight. Also another little boring bar right here. I don't think that's ever been used. The tool is not sharp. It has not been sharpened. Tiny little cutoff tool. Again I can't imagine this machine having the power to cut anything off. And here's another little tool. A tool holder and this is designed to hold these little tools from Edistal and there's I don't know there's a bunch of them in here but the whole idea on these in order to sharpen them you only have to grind one end. Now these have never been ground they're still painted on both ends. But if you grind one end according to their directions the other angles that you would need clearance angles are already included. I guess I should have shown you the cover to this little box before but this would have been an accessory kit. There's the number and it's a 13 piece set of quarter inch lathe tools. There's a little information there you can read that if you want. So that's pretty nice to have. Thank you Bill. Here are six advertisements from the 1963 Popular Science magazine.
Well, this is a pretty nice selection of tools that came from Canada, but there's still a few things that I need. And luckily, there's another man that just sent me, this just came, and I'm not going to show it to you, but there's some great items in here, accessories for the Unimat, and uh, expensive ones, and these were a gift as well, so be sure and tune in for the next video, which is number 941, where I will show you the contents of this box. Hope you enjoy the video. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe. There's some pictures at the end. Too.